Hi everyone, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Welcome back to my garden where once again, not a thing is going on. <laughs> but we're getting ever closer to planting day and that's very exciting. Happy spring for one thing. Now before I get started with today's video, I did want to say something. You know, we're all going through some scary times right now with this coronavirus pandemic. And something I wanted to share with you is the importance of growing a garden. This is something that we can all be doing, even with our social distancing policies. And the great thing is you're going to get fresh, healthy produce that is safe for you to eat out of the deal. You're going to learn valuable skills by growing a garden. You will have produce that you can share with friends and neighbors and yes, complete strangers. And this is something that will go with you for your entire life. It is so important to grow a garden. And that's part of what my role is. And that is for you to learn about growing a garden, for me to help you with problems that you have. You can send me emails and we'll grow a garden together this year. So that is what I wanted to give you as a takeaway. Growing a garden is something that is very positive and we get so many benefits from it. I love being out in the sunshine and fresh air and that's something that's very important right now. Okay, let's get to today's topic. For my March 22nd column, I wrote about growing cabbage family crops. Members of the cabbage family include cabbage, there's a surprise, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, kale, kohlrabi, radishes, rutabagas. It's really quite a large family. And I love cabbage family crops. But the problem is that they tend to be bug magnets. Aphids think they're wonderful. And then depending upon where you live in the country, you probably get cabbage worms or cabbage loopers. So what the point of my column was this week was different organic ways that you can keep those insects off of your plants. And today what I'm going to do is demonstrate what those techniques are so that they are even more clear for you. To keep aphids and cabbage worms away from our cabbage family crops, I heartily recommend using row covers. And I'll show you two different types that you could try. One thing that I love about row covers is that I'm not killing the insects, I'm just excluding them from the crops themselves. Now, none of us like aphids, and certainly none of us like cabbage worms, but if you stop and think how they are the prey for certain types of predatory beneficial insects, we don't wanna take away their food, right? So let me show you the first kind of row cover you could use. First thing I wanted to do is to point out our hoop system for our raised beds, just to give you an idea. Every two feet on the outside of the bed and on both sides, we have these roughly 10 inch long pieces of one inch diameter PVC pipe and they've been clamped to the sides of the beds. And then we had a bunch of leftover half inch drip tubing that we didn't need. And so we used them to make hoops. And so these just slip in right there and on this side. Certainly an alternative would be to push the hoop into the soil on the insides of the bed. Now you don't have to use drip tubing, obviously, for your hoops. It's just something we recycled. But you could use PVC pipe. You could use rebar that has been bent in a hoop shape or electrical conduit that has been bent into a hoop shape as well. So all of these things would work. So the first type of row cover I wanted to show you is called floating row cover. You can see it's very lightweight and airy. It lets in sunlight and moisture. So if it were to rain, it will go through this fabric. You can find it at garden centers and online, very easy to locate. And what we do is we just put this over the bed, over the hoops. Make sure it's on this end. And once it's on the beds, then you want to weight down at least the ends of it just to make sure that it doesn't blow away in a windstorm. Because what's the point of excluding insects from your plants if there's no cover in the way? 
This works really great at the beginning and the end of the season. This works as a season extender because it gives a few degrees of frost protection. But in this case, I'm talking about using it to exclude the insects from the plants. The parent of the cabbage worm is the cabbage butterfly. That's the white one with a few black spots on its wings. And what it does is it lays eggs on the plant leaves. When those eggs hatch, that's the worms that you're trying to keep away. So this works really great because the butterflies cannot get to those plants. So that's the first type of row cover. The second type of row cover is made from something called tulle, T-U-L-L-E. It's also known as bridal veil netting. Now I bought a bolt of this online because you can really get some great bulk buys, but it is a very finely woven net. And what happens is you put it over the bed just like with floating row cover. And the reason I like it is because for cabbage family crops, which are cool season crops, they like cooler weather. If I put this over them, there's more air flow. And I think the plants do better because of that. Under the floating row cover, which works so well for so many crops, I think you know there's less air movement. It's probably a little warmer in there than the plants would like. So let me show this to you up close so you can see what it's like. And the important thing is to get a very fine mesh of the netting because if you have a larger type, you are going to very easily let in aphids because aphids are just tiny. So this is a really fine weave. Let me show it to you real quick and then I'll put it on the bed. Now I don't know how easily you'll be able to see this, but I'm putting my hand on the other side and this is a really fine weave. Very easy to find. You can get it at fabric stores, but the better deal is to buy it bulk on a bolt online. Here's how it looks on a bed. Look how easy it is to see through it. And what I like about that is it's a great way to easily keep an eye on how the plants are doing without having to remove the floating row cover. Now remember, you want to weight down the ends and possibly the sides of the netting to make sure it doesn't blow off. Now I have been able to get about three years of use out of a piece of the netting. It is definitely more delicate because it's so thin, but you just have to take good care of it and you should be able to get two to three growing seasons out of it. Now one other insect that could be a problem with cabbage family crops is the slug. And the method I wanted to show you today has to do with keeping slugs away from plants that have a central stalk. So primarily broccoli. It could also be used for kale. It wouldn't really work well for cabbage or cauliflower. But I just wanted to show this to you. There is a product that you can easily find in garden centers that's called Cory's Slug and Snail Copper Tape. Here's a picture of what it looks like. It's a roll of copper tape that has paper backing on it. And the intriguing thing about copper is that the skin of slugs reacts electrically with the copper. And so they don't want anything to do with it. So what I used to do is I would make little circles of the tape and I would leave that paper backing on it and I'd staple the ends. And then I'd put that around the base of a plant down at the soil surface and that was to act as a barrier to keep slugs from crossing it and climbing up into my broccoli plants or my kale plants. Well, that works quite well, but my husband had an idea and it has worked even better. What I don't like about my method is that, you know, they're going to get wet sooner or later and then they get really flimsy. And if they kind of are sagging on one side, then that is a way that the slug could get to the plants. So what Bill did is he took some PVC pipe that is like a drain pipe and it is roughly three inches in diameter and he cut lengths of it that are maybe just an inch and a half long. And then he took that copper tape 
and he pulled off that paper backing and stuck it to the outside of these rings. So these are super sturdy. And so we just put them around the base of a plant and the slugs do not want to cross this to get to the plant inside. Here's what they look like around the base of some of my kale plants. These are growing in our hoop house and they're looking pretty sad at this point because they've grown all winter long, but you get the idea. Now there's one last thing I wanted to clarify. Today I was talking about using floating row cover and tool over cabbage family crops. And the reason you can get away with this is because none of those crops needs to be pollinated by insects. If you were thinking about covering, say, melon plants or cucumbers, tomatoes, beans, anything like that, they need to be pollinated and so that wouldn't work. But generally speaking, those crops don't need to have a cover over them to keep insects away. However, you can use floating row cover over those warm season crops at the very beginning of the season just to give them a little extra heat and get them off to a really nice start. But once they're starting to bloom, that's when the covers have to come off. I hope that makes sense. Okay, that's all for now. And if you're interested in reading my garden column about growing cabbage family crops, it will be available on my blog starting on March 22nd. In the meantime, hang in there, stay healthy, and happy gardening.